Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And I want to thank God for this wonderful moment of time in which God has given each one of us yet another opportunity to be counted among the living. And let us thank God for that. Well, today in this Sabbath, we want to talk about one of the subjects which I believe most of the people right now, they need to know about it. It is the present truth of our time. So, the subject of today, it is entitled Moses, Aaron, and the Lord. So, we are going to look into the Bible so that we can be able to understand the beautiful truth regarding this subject of Moses and Aaron. So, there is a beautiful picture which well, I believe in the Bible text, um, Moses, Aaron, and the Lord, they represent God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it is very, very important and is a message of vital importance in which you and I need to understand as we are right now waiting for the second advent of our Lord and soon coming King. We know very well that as we are living in this end of times, there are a lot of doctrines which have brought among the Adventism and so many people right now have joined the Advent movement recently. They have no idea of all the history of what our pioneers believed. So many people, they've been taught by the pastors to say that all the doctrines which are the pillars of our faith, the pillars of the true Adventism are just to be denounced as error. So many brothers and sisters, they've even placed all the fundamental principles which have um, sustained the Advent movement for the past almost to 70 years. And now they have been trashed in the trash heaps. And now we are finding so many people, they stand in circles, Sabbath in and Sabbath out, defending the errors and having using the fundamental pre, um, belief system, which are 28 fundamental beliefs, which they are now used to try each and every individual. We have to join the Adventist. So before you join, you have to prove that you believe that God is made up of three different beings, which is God the Father, God the Holy Son, God and God the Holy Spirit. And these three are not three, but they are one. So my fellow brethren and sisters, here on Three Angels Messages, it is our duty to help our fellow brethren and sisters to come to the true knowledge of God because we have realized that the second coming of our Lord, it is just at hand and our brethren, they are right here worshipping the wrong gods on the right day of worship. So it is our favorite prayer that you pay a very good attention as you're going to go through, rightly divide the word of truth with the pure, thy say the Lord. So my brother, my brother, please, I want you to use your Bible as you're going to um, rightly divide the word of God. So right now, um, I want us to understand what this Moses, Aaron, and the Holy, the, the, the rod represent is I've just briefly said that Moses represents God the Father and Aaron represent the Son, and the Lord represents the Holy Spirit. But we need to prove all things with the pure, thus say the Lord. Please, I want you to turn your Bibles with me. As I'm going to open, I want you to turn your Bibles with me. Uh, we have to call our, our presentation to a promise. Let us call our presentation to a promise. Turn your Bibles with me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read verse 9 and 10. Bible says, but as it, it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered in the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now, in this chapter, the word deep things, actually it is a Greek word that says bathos, in other words, we are going to go beneath the surface of the scriptures, searching all things 
proving with the scripture, scripture upon the scripture, rightly divide and to prove what Moses, Aaron, and the Holy Spirit represent. So let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father who art in heaven above, we have come before thy throne of grace in this afternoon. We want to thank you, Father God, for your love, your kindness, your grace, and the message which I know each and every morning. In this moment of time, Father, as we've come before thee, we ask that you may give us another supply of your Holy Spirit to help us, Father, to divide the way of truth. May your Holy Spirit reveal to us your deep things. May your Holy Spirit open the eyes of your children. May you open the hearts of your children so that they can be able to understand what is written in the books so that they can be able to make their right decision so that they won't be found worshipping the wrong gods in the right day of worship. As we can see that our fellow brethren and sisters, we've been lied to for a very long time by our leaders because they've brought the fundamental doctrines of Catholicism among us, our brethren. Now people are drinking from the fountain of Catholicism. Some are drunk, confused. They don't even know what is truth. So, Father, it is our favorite prayer that through this presentation, it can be able to help our fellow friends and brothers and sisters to know you much better. In the mighty name of Christ, we pray and direct our prayers in the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus Christ is our great high priest and the final work of atonement is not taking place. Even Father, we thank you for your love. Be with us and help us to divide the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful moment of time. Now, let us go into the Bible as we're going to divide, as we've said. In the book of Exodus, chapter um, 7, turn your Bibles with me in the book of Exodus, chapter 7. Exodus, chapter 7. Then the Bible says in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, uh, 7. All right. Exodus chapter is 7, verse 1. Please let us hear what the Lord has to say. Now, so the Lord said to Moses, See, I've made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Now, the Lord God Almighty said unto Moses, See, I've made you the God unto Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron, he shall be your prophet. And now, let us try to see something in this chapter. On verse 1, the Lord God Almighty is the one who said unto Moses, Moses, see, I've made you the, the God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron shall be your prophet. How many Or Now, there's one thing you must you need to understand. God said to Moses, you have made you a God. In other words, God said to Pharaoh, you shall be Elohim to Pharaoh. And Elohim, that is a representation of the Father. And Aaron representing Christ. All right. So, this is the beautiful truth which you need to understand and you need to pay attention especially to what the Bible says and what it does not say. Now, Moses is to represent the Father and he said it's going to be the Elohim which is the interlocking of Genesis 1. God is spoke. He says, God created the heaven, the heaven and the earth. And the word God is Elohim, representing Elohim. Elohim, meaning to say, it is the plurality of the majesty. So, many people, especially Adventists, when reading the Bible, when opening the book of Genesis 1, they come to a point where they are applying a philosophy upon the word of God. So, therefore, when they are reading Genesis 1, when they says God created the heaven and the earth, and they are not applying 
the plurality and then they take it to say that it represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they are missing the key point. Because remember, if we are the student of the Bible, we need to rightly divide the word of truth, comparing the scripture with the scripture so as to get the beautiful picture of what the Bible says. Now, in Genesis 1, God spoke and it was. And the one who spoke, God is a plurality of the majesty, not of beings or of person. So, I want us to look into what the Bible says in the book of First Chronicles chapter 29 and we shall read verse 10 and 11 because we need to come up with the with the, the truth of God's word and the, the beautiful picture as to what the Bible says. Now, in the book of uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, Bible says in the book of First Chronicles chapter 29, right, Second Chronicles, right, okay, First Chronicles chapter 29, so, Bible says, Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in, in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. This is very, very interesting. David, when he wrote through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he understand the God of heaven. He understand God the Father, the Almighty, the head of over all, all creation. Then he wrote and said, Father, he, when he blessed God, he says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, victory, and the majesty. Elohim, representing the majesty, the plurality of the majesty of the Father, not of persons. So, as you can see, David is confirming that Elohim is the father. And as to what I've said, the plurality of the majesty in what David has said, he is pointing to the father only. This is very beautiful, brothers and sisters, if we read the Bible clearly, comparing the scripture of the scripture, and pay attention to what the Bible says and what it does not say. So, here is something I, I, sorry, I need also to point out. If you, you are to pay attention again in the uh, verse 11, and please, I want you to pay attention to the last clause of verse 11. He says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Right. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Now, I want us to compare the script of the scripture. So as to understand the Elohim in which Moses was to represent in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh and before Aaron, his brother. So as to prove to, uh, to prove this belief system of the Trinitarian view, to prove it wrong, because we are having so many people, pastors and leaders, who are busy trying to put their belief system over people so as to mislead them, sending them back in the darkness. Because this belief system of the Trinity, it makes people to worship Lucifer, in the right day of worship. Many people right now, yes, every Sabbath, we bow before God, we pray, 
we have a very nice meetings, we preach, we teach people. But as long if we are still being found worshiping the wrong gods in the right day of worship, our worship is in vain. So we are to prove all things with the scripture. And which is why we need to uh, look into this start of Moses, Aaron, and the rod. Because it proves this belief system false. Now, I want us to look to uh, the last clause of verse uh, 11. The last part of First Chronicles 29 verse 11. The last part where David writes and says, This Elohim, he is head over all. Now, where else in the Bible can we find a statement where Bible says, the Father is the head above all. Now, I want you to turn with me in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter. All right. 1 Corinthians. I believe there is a, another be beautiful understanding to what uh, the writer Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. I believe Paul, when you read the Bible again, he had another understanding to say this Elohim is the head above all. And this Elohim was to be represented by Moses. So, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we shall read verse 3. Verse 3. Um, Alright, yes. Okay. All right. All right. So then Paul he wrote and say, um, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is is who? Is God. Did you see? Do you see? Paul, when you write to the Corinthians on chapter 11, on verse 3, every, uh, he was having a very good understanding of what David wrote in the Old Testament, in the book of uh, First Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 10 and 11. Then he understand what David wrote. And he now, he's now putting a confirmation to what David has said. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of every uh, woman, it is man. And the head of, of Christ is who? He is God. God the Father is the head over all. So, when you read the Bible... In the right understanding to and paying a very good attention to what the Bible says, comparing the scripture with the scripture, the truth of God's word, it always been made plain upon the tablets. And too many people these very days, the problem is one when they are reading the Bible, they do not care to what the truth is, they only care to what they want the truth to be. But there is a problem with this belief system. It makes people to have a wrong understanding of God. So, whenever you are coming up with the wrong understanding of the God of heaven, therefore, your worship is in vain and you are going to be left without being sealed. But you receive the mark of condemnation because once you worship the wrong gods, you are going to receive the mark of the condemnation. And the mark of condemnation, which is the mark of the beast. You see, when you worship the Trinity, the Trinity gods, it you, result you to the receiving of the mark of condemnation or the mark of the beast. And you'll be settled for destruction. The wrath of God is going to be poured for over every person who worship wrong gods in the right day of worship. You see, worshiping every Sabbath, it does not matter when you worship on the Sabbath. 
Yes, you may keep the Sabbath of the Holy, but if you still worship wrong gods in the day of worship, your worship is in vain. You shall receive the mark of the beast, and you're going to receive the wrath of God, who shall be put on this earth without measure, without mixture. So you need to understand this vital message of truth right now is a moment. You can look around right now. The judgments of God are even being poured right now in the land. Look what's happening right now, my brethren and sisters. The result, it is because people, they are worshiping the wrong gods. Yes, they may profess to say, no, I keep the Sabbath holy. Yes, you may keep the Sabbath, but I want to tell you something. Just as long as you keep on worshiping the wrong gods, you are going to be, to be, to receive the wrath of God. It's going to be poured upon your life without mixture. And I will tell you, you can look around right now. The judgments right now. The earthquakes, the floods on the land. Right now, he can tell you to China. What is happening now? The floods, the buildings, are, and the people, they have been taken by the floods. People are crying for help. In the land, fire by the land. What is happening before the people right now? And yet, you are still sitting right there. You know, Sabbath in, Sabbath out. And say, yeah, I keep the Sabbath. Let me tell you something. Yes, you may keep the Sabbath holy. But as long as you keep and worship the wrong gods, you are worshiping in vain. God the Father is, is what is represented by Elohim, and Elohim meaning to say it is the plurality of majesty, not of person. David confirms in the book of First Chronicles 29 on verse 10 and 11. And Paul even confirmed to say, God the Father, he is the head above all. I want to tell with me, because I can, you know, it pains my heart each and every moment when I see some brothers and sisters going on, making some circles, and say, we worship God, we worship God. As long as you worship the Trinitarian view, the Trinitarian God, your worship is in vain. Some may say, oh, all right, yes, we say, uh, most are in the road. Now, I want you to understand as well something that has been represented by Aaron. Now, turn with me uh, to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we shall read verse 5. We are going to rightly divide and allow the Bible to explain each and everything so that we may know what we believe. We must know what we believe and we must be ready to prove all things with the pure. Thus said the Lord. Bible it speaks of symbolism and each and everything in the Bible has something to say. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, I want to prove to you that Aaron, Aaron represent Christ which is uh, which is in the book of Exodus is 7 uh, God says Aaron your brother is going to be your prophet so Aaron was to speak for Moses now in on verse 5 of 1st Timothy chapter uh, 2 verse 5 for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So, during the time of Moses, God said unto, uh, unto Moses in the book of Exodus 7, verse 1, Moses, he shall be a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, he shall be your prophet, or he shall, he's going to be your mediator. You shall tell him what to do, and him Aaron, your brother, is going to speak. So, there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and, and man, and the man Christ Jesus. And during the time of Moses, Moses was representing the father, and Aaron, the brother, was representing Christ, the mediator between Pharaoh and the people, and, and, and God. So, God was represented by Moses and Christ representing, uh, uh, represented by, by, by Aaron, the brother. So, Moses was to tell Aaron what to say. And Aaron was to go and speak as what 
Moses yet said. So, I want us to prove all things right now. Because there is a problem, a grave. People are making a grave mistake by believing in the Trinity. You are making a grave mistake. Because, number one, it leads you to twist the word of God. It leads you to do what again? To worship wrong gods in the right day of worship. And to tell you, most Adventists, Adventists are not going to be, to be tried by the Sunday law. Adventists are going to be tried by the issue of who they worship. So, you are just right there. And you say, ah, I keep the Sabbath holy. And I know the scriptures with my head. And I pay all my tithe. And I'm a pastor. I have a PhD. I've graduated in Solosi. And I'm working at the general conference. I'm a leader. I'm a president of the general conference. So, now it's okay. I can just tell them what to do. You see, my brother and my sister, the day is coming because it speaks and says in the book of Ecclesiastics, for there is time for, all, for everything under the sun. Right now, God gave us this moment as we are living in this time of the investigative judgment. We have this opportunity to make things right. Because Christ is still our great high priest. We have this moment. Let us not waste any chances. Because if you're going to keep on defending your church, you are going to be consumed very soon by the judgments of God. Are going to be poured without mixture. Oh yes. If the children of Israel fail to reach the land, their promised land, how much more? God divorce. He is fewer branches which are Israel of old. How much more a grafted branch a served the Adventist? You need to understand, my fellow brethren, the time, the gravity of the situation, and the gravity of the message, the loud cry of the, of the third ages message, it shows that it has to be preached to all the nations urgently. And the cry is to call people out of every fallen denomination. Why? Because there is no hope for change in those denominations. People, they need to come out so that they can able to separate themselves. To be in a place where you can able to hear the voice of God. By worshipping wrong gods. Turn with me in the book of John chapter 12. We shall read verse 49. But before we read them, allow me to read a small quotation by Sister White in the book Patriots and Prophets, uh, page 366. Sister White said, Since the sin of our first parents, there has been no direct communication between God and man. The Father has given the world into the hands of Christ that through his material, uh, medi mediatical work he may redeem men and vindicate the authority and holiness of the law of God. All the communion between heaven and the fallen rest has been through Christ. Now, this is what Sister White has said. Since the, parent, the sins of our first parents, there has been no direct communication between God and the man. And during the time of Moses, there was no direct communication between Moses as he was representing the father and the people in the land of Egypt. Then God had to give a message to Moses and Moses to give the message to the brother who was the prophet representing Christ. And then Aaron was going to preach, uh, to, to tell 
King Pharaoh what Moses had said. Because Moses was God. God made him to become a God unto Pharaoh. And Christ is going to uh, Pharaoh, uh, so I mean, Aaron had to speak what he, he heard from his brother. So, how can I prove that uh, Aaron was to speak what he have heard? Now, turn with me in the book of uh, John, chapter 12, and I want us to read verse uh, 49. Because if we are saying Aaron was to speak what he heard from uh, Moses, we have to prove all these things taking uh, from whom Aaron was representing. So, in the book of uh, John chapter 10, on verse 49, here is what Christ said. So he said here, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me, uh, he gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. So, Aaron, he was a prophet or a mediator between Moses and Pharaoh. And Aaron was to speak what he heard or, or, or what Moses had commanded him to speak before Pharaoh. So, Christ is now confirming to say that as the mediator between God and man, he is the one who brings the reconciliation. So, he was not to say, I speak not on my own authority, but I speak that which God the Father has commanded me to say and to speak. So, do you see the beautiful picture in this Moses, Aaron, and the Lord? This is what the majority of the people right now are missing. Well, this is what many people are missing. Because this is the message which I believe most of the people, you cannot even hear, hear it on the pulpit because most of the famous pastors, you know, like I want to tell you something, they preach for a salary, so they'll compromise for this truth because what they want is to make sure that they can able to continue working under the general conference so as to, to be paid lump sum money to sustain and to, uh, to support their families. Because all the people who are preaching this truth, they have been disfellowshipped right away. My mind. And we're going to look to uh, that in our uh, another start in presentation. We are going to prove to you that the general conference and all its structure they've adopted all these things from the Catholic to how they disfellowship, how they lead, and all their teachings. We're going to prove into our next presentation. So we're going to pray that God may help us. So turn with me in the book of Exodus again, and I want us to read on verse 4. Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 16, And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even he shall be uh, to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. Did you hear what the Lord says? Brothers and sisters, this is the truth of God's word. Aaron, the brother, So, when you, are, when you allow the Bible to explain itself, the truth of God's word is always plain and simple. But when you try to complicate things, trying to put a philosophy, you see, when you complicate things, you ne Bible, it will never answer you. But it will make you to twist. And when you twist the word of God, you are sinning against God. What many people are missing, it is the basic principle. When you read the Bible in the first book of Genesis, you need to understand the basics. Once you miss the basics, 
all the things that are going to read going further from the book of Exodus going to the book of Revelation, when you miss the basic principle in the book of Genesis, all the things you are going to read furthermore is going to be a lie. You need to have a basic principle. A basic principle, it is the foundation where you have to build your house on. Many people, they don't have the fundamental principle, foundation. They are building their foundation not upon the rock, but they are built upon the sand. The, funda the fundamental principles that have sustained our movement for the past 70 to 100 and something years, it is the true knowledge of God the Father and the Son through the power of their spirit which they share. Once you hear this basic principle in your mind and in your heart, you are building your house on the rock. And the rock is Jesus himself. And Jesus is the one who comes to us through his unseen person representing the Holy Spirit. And now, it is where we are going because we need to understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. All right. So, Moses and Aaron clearly represented by the Father and the Son. Now, I want us to represent, uh, to look as well to what the rod represent. Because the scriptures, it will, uh, it will always become plain and beautiful when we allow the Bible to explain itself. So, now, here we are, and this is where the truth becomes so, uh, so beautiful and clear. Now, whose rod was it, and with, the, with which the signs were to be performed in the book of Exodus 4? In the book of Exodus chapter 4, and um, we know very well that the, the rod, okay, fine. Let us go into, rush into the... Uh, Exodus chapter 4 and uh, let us read verse um, verse 4 then the Lord said to Moses reach out your hand and take it by the tail and he reached out his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand alright as well and I want us to read on verse 17 again uh, verse 17 and you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. And verse 20. And when then Moses took his uh, wife and his sons and set them on a donkey and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Now, the rod in which the signs were performed, it was the rod of Moses which he gave unto whom? Aaron, his brother. Why? Did he, why is it that, uh, or why is it that Moses said he had to give the rod unto his brother Aaron so that all the signs may be performed by the command of Moses? And Aaron was performing the signs by the command of Moses. If Aaron said, Do this, and then uh, if Moses said unto Aaron, You must do this, and Aaron, you do. According to what Moses had said that he must do. So he was always acting according to the command. Turn with me in Exodus 7. And I want us to read verse 9 and verse 19. Alright, verse... Alright, Exodus chapter 7. Uh, verse 9. When Pharaoh speaks to you, say... Show a miracle for yourself. Then he shall say to Aaron, Take your uh, rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So you see, in confirming to what I've said, Moses, he was giving a command unto his brother and Aaron was acting according to uh, what Moses had said and commanded him to do. So do you see, this is when where the, the, the truth of God became so clear 
to every individual, to every truth seeker. Now, let's read verse 19. Verse 19, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron, Take uh, your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of the air of the Egypt and over their streams and over their rivers and over their ponds and over all their pools of water that they may become blood and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt both in buckets of wood and in pitchers of stone. Aaron was to act according to the command of Moses. So do you see, my brother, it is very clear to what the, uh, this picture portrays. The rod represents the Holy Spirit which Christ received from his father and he received the, the, the Spirit from his father. Now, how do we prove that it is what has been represented? Turn with me in the book of Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 33 Bible says therefore being by this right hand of God exalted having received of the father the promise of the Holy Ghost he hath shed forth he at this which you now see and hear so when Aaron when he received the rod from, from Moses and Moses then he commanded his brother to perform the signs and the wonders before Pharaoh. And it is what is being now re represented by Christ, having received the Holy Spirit from the Father. And we are now seeing the signs and the wonders on the day of Pentecost. He is now shedding all the Holy Spirit over his disciples. They received the Spirit of the promise. Brothers and sisters, it is very important to understand. And sometimes if this beautiful truth seems not to be clear, tell me with me again in the book of Revelation chapter 5. And I want us to read verse 6. Revelation chapter 5. Right. Revelation chapter 5. Alright. Verse Six. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as, th as through it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Christ, the Lamb of God, standing in the midst of the symbol, seven golden sticks. And he has got how many? Uh, seven horns, which are the seven spirits sent forth where? In all the earth. So, I wanted to say, um, Christ is the one and on the day of Pentecost, the disciples received the Holy Spirit from their master. Christ Jesus is the one who breathed upon them. And they received the spirit of the promise. And they performed all the signs and the wonders through the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came upon their lives, then they become and it is fulfilled to what it had been said. And as we can also understand to what it says on Acts 1 verse 8, it says... You shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit is upon you. Then you shall be my disciples. Now, on the day of Pentecost, it, then it had been confirmed. And then you can see the disciples prophesying. They are able to speak in the foreign tongues. And every individual who were present on that meeting, they are able to understand to what it has been said. And people, they repented. They were being converted and thousands were baptized on that day. So Peter is now confirming that this Holy Spirit, it is the spirit of the promise which we you have heard. So Christ 
on that day. Turn with me in the book of uh, Titus. Uh, we shall read on this. Uh, Titus 3. Let's read on the verse 4 through 6. Titus. But after the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he had saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. All these uh, Bible writers, they understand that the only way for us to receive the Holy Spirit, it is through the Son of God, the Lamb. So, the Holy Spirit, it is not another being or a, or a person, but it is the life and the power of God which Christ received from his Father without measure. And to all the people who are calling upon the name of God, who believe in the Father and in the Son, they will receive the Spirit. Galatians 4 verse 6, it says, now you are the sons of God. Now because you are the sons of God and God has shed forth uh, the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So, we receive the Holy Spirit through the Son, which is what Titus said. The only way for us to receive the Holy Spirit, it is through the Son. Let us get a little bit closer as you are now uh, closing. So, I want to say, the Holy Spirit, as we have said, it is only to be received through the Son. And now, I want you to think about uh, this uh, for a moment. When you look at the picture of Moses, Aaron, and the rod, how many beings are there? Because now we are not closing. So, we have to uh, come up to the final conclusion so that it can be able to wrap up and make people to understand what we want you to hear and to uh, in order for you to not to be deceived by uh, all these doctrines. So, how many beings do we have in Moses, Aaron, and the rod? How many beings are there? How many beings are there? All right. So we have Moses and Aaron and the rod. We only have we only have two beings. Now, I want to ask another question. Are Moses and Aaron equal by nature? Oh yes, they are equal by nature. And which is what the father and the son, the father and the son, they are all equal by nature. And now, the stick or the rod, is it equal to Moses and Aaron? Well, this is where we need to understand because it's very important. The rod, it is not a being. It is not a being, but it is a stick. Now, the rod, it is what has been, uh, it represents the Holy Spirit. So, I want to uh, just read for you this point for a moment to help you to understand now. Just pay a very good attention. So, uh, so, it was Moses' rod which he had given to Aaron, just as the Holy Spirit is the Father's Spirit, which he had given to Christ. And this is uh, a beautiful representation of the true Godhead, which the Lord has given us through Moses and Aaron. So, Moses 
and Aaron was represented by the rod and which we will find again to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it represents the Father and the Son because it is the life and the power of God the Father which Christ received from his Father. So, the same with Moses and Aaron and the rod. So don't miss out, my fellow brothers and sisters. Don't ever allow the devil to steal your soul from the kingdom of God by this doctrine of the Trinity. Don't allow it. But unless if you want, it is your choice. So, uh, the rod is, uh, it is not even equal in nature, as I've said. And it is not a being. It is just the power that is representing him, not a being. So, it is not equal to him in nature. So, which is what we see when Aaron performed the sand and the wonders. He was performing the sand and the wonders using the rod of Aaron, uh, the rod of Moses. Representing the Holy Spirit, the life and the power of God, which Christ received from his father. So, my fellow brethren, we need to understand this truth because the time we are in, we are witnessing the final scenes of this atheist history. We may never know. So, what did Aaron become in this picture? Because we are saying Aaron representing Christ. And to, to point out something, Aaron he became the high priest. He, be, he became a high priest. So, we are now making this thing to be so, uh, become so interesting and making the truth of God to become so clear. So, Aaron became a high priest. And who is our high priest today? Christ. So do you see? Moses represented God the Father. And Aaron represented Jesus Christ. And today Christ is our great high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. And Aaron was a high priest uh, during the time of Moses to all the children of Israel. And as we can see, Moses also representing the Father. So, uh, in Revelation 1, uh, verse 6, there's something which we need to understand as well. Uh, all right. Let's read in verse 1, um, verse 6. And he had made us kings and the priests to his God and the Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And as we can see now, Aaron's sons were unfaithful, which are Nadab and uh, Abihu, and were destroyed, while other two were faithful, Eliezer and uh, Etama. So that's representing God's faithful and unfaithful children. So to all the people who represent, God had made us the kings. But to all who, who are showing themselves unfaithful, are going to be destroyed right now we all say we are representing the spiritual israel so to all the people we are the high priest uh, we are the kings and and to all the people who are proving to be unfaithful to god are going to be destroyed when christ came if you should prove yourself be unfaithful you are going to be destroyed just as uh just as abihu and Nadab, these were the children of Israel representing the people in our time. And if you prove yourself unfaithful, well, well, time is coming. So, uh, there is another beautiful picture as we are now closing, which I also want to, to point out in the story of Abraham and his son. Abraham and his son. Uh, we are seeing only two beings in that event representing the father and the son offering 
the, 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 the sacrificial lamp to redeem all the world. So, if the, if, if there is a trinity God of three beings or persons, then why wasn't three beings or uh, persons involved in the offering of Isaac? If this belief system was true and just, why is it that we are only finding only two beings involved in that same event of offering of the son? Why two, not three? Moses and Aaron, two beings and the Lord representing the Holy Spirit. And on the issue of offering the son of Abraham and Isaac, only two beings, why not three? You need to question your doctrine, brethren and sisters. If your religion uh, doesn't allow you to question its doctrine of beliefs, then it is hiding something from you. You need to question every doctrine. Same applies to every member of the Seventh-day Adventist. Once you question their doctrines of belief system, then you are going to be disfellowshipped. They call a meeting. And after the, uh, uh, the church meeting, then they will disfellowship you. You are not going to be allowed to, to participate. And if you don't even turn back, they will disfellowship you, removing your names in their church books. And some, they go out with a, a broken heart spirit. You need to understand when you stand up for the truth of God's word, you will be disfellowshipped for the truth. But you need to go out praising and rejoicing, knowing that you did your part. You preached the word of God and tell them. Many people, they compromise their faith for the sake of wanting to be loved and be highly favored for you to become a pastor. You need to compromise your faith. You need to believe that there is a three gods which are three, uh, but they say they are one God. Even a great one child, you can say one plus one plus one should tell you it goes to three, but you can see most of educated pastors to say that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are not three, but they are one. What a nonsense. We need to come to our senses, brothers and sisters. God, in the book of Genesis 1, it speaks of the plurality of the majesty, not of person or of, of beings. The plurality of majesty, which uh, King David, in the book of 1 Chronicles 29, verse 10 and 11, when he confirms, and on the last verse of 11, he also confirms that the Father is the head above all. And who did Paul say is the head above all? He, Paul, he says in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, verse 11, uh, 11 verse uh, 3. Then Paul says, God is the head above all. So, brethren and sisters, now is a high time. If there was a time in which you and I you have to put away sin, if there's a time where you have to do a personal challenge to put away the false beliefs, the false God, it is now. God the Father has worked these things out perfectly to show himself, his son and his own divine spirit through the stories and the events of the Bible. The event of Abraham offering Isaac is a perfect illustration of God the Father offering his own son, Christ, for our salvation and our only two beings are involved. The story of Moses and Aaron going before Pharaoh is also a perfect representation of the one true God the Father and his son, our Christ, who is our true prophet and our true mediator and our great high spirit, uh, high priest, and their spirit represented by the rod of Moses, which he gave unto Aaron his brother. So, two beings are involved in the plan of creation. Two beings are involved in the plan of redemption. 
Two beings are involved in the story of Moses and Aaron. Two beings are involved in the story of Abraham and Isaac. Why two? Why not three? If the Trinity was true, why two? Not three. We need to come to our senses, brethren and sisters. Now is a time. I am making an appeal to you right on this day of rest. The only way to find true rest in Jesus is to recognize Christ as your true comforter. To recognize as, uh, Christ as the one, our great high priest. To recognize Christ as him represented by the Spirit. To recognize Christ as the one who came to us through the power of the Holy Spirit which represent the Father and the Son. The book of Romans, Paul, he written says, Romans 8 verse 9. Then he says, Paul, to all, we are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of the Son, he is not of his. We walk in the Spirit. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Why do you have to receive the spirit of Christ in your heart? Galatians 4 verse 6. You need to have the spirit of Christ in you. So that Christ, he is the one, the mediator. When God looks down upon you, he can recognize you as his own son and his own daughter. Why? Because he can see the life of Christ. He can see his own personal presence of the Spirit which he gave unto Christ, his only beloved Son. We need to understand the prophets of old, the right Bible through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If you read in the book of 1 Peter 1 verse 11, it says this, the prophets, they write all things, showing them things to come through the inspiration of the Spirit of Christ. And Christ before he ascended unto heaven, when he appeared before the disciples, then he said, peace be to you. When after the same that then he breathed upon the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit, the power and the life of God, not another being. My appeal to all Adventists, if you really want to be among the 144,000, now is a time to do away with the false doctrine of the Trinity. It's time for you to do away with the doctrine of this because it is the fundamental doctrines of Catholicism. You are in agreement with the Catholic Church, which is why the Catholic recognize this movement as their own member. And in Revelation 12, the great dragon is going to make war not with the church but with the seed. The church represented by the woman and the women is the Seventh-day Adventist, the mother church. The, the seed which are the people who came out of her and these people, they refused to compromise their faith. They refused to, to to comply with the Trinitarian view. Anyone who does not comply with the Trinity is going to be persecuted, is going to be persecuted, to be tortured. That time is coming. We are heading right now back to the dark ages. We need to come to our senses. We need to die for what we believe. We need to seal our preachings and writings with our very own blood. Now is a time. Be ready, ladies and gentlemen. Be ready. I have said, be ready, be ready, be ready. Now is a time to be awake from our slumber. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. So, the start of Moses and Aaron and the rod. It points us to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, who is the Elohim, 
represented by Moses and the mediator, First Timothy 2 verse 5, is Christ Jesus represented by Aaron, the great high priest, and the rod represented by the Holy Spirit which Christ received from his Father. If it is a prayer that you say, God, today, I want to receive the life and your power into my life. Let us pray. It is never too late for you to receive the life of God in your own life. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this wonderful presentation. We thank you, Father God, for the words and the truth which you have revealed to us today. Father, I want to thank you for this start of Moses, Aaron, and the Lord. For it shows us that the Trinity view, it is the fundamental doctrine of errors. Dear Father, we do not want to be found worshipping the wrong gods in the right day of worship. Help us this very day to make things right with you. I pray for my brethren and sisters out there. May you help them, Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit to make things right, to put away sin, to put away this doctrine of Trinity, to put away the doctrine of heresies. Now is a time. Please, God, we ask that God help us. We know that all power is, is belonging unto you. So we need you to help us. It's our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. My fellow brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you so much for your time. May the Lord bless us and may the Lord help you to understand this beautiful truth of Moses and Aaron and the Lord. As I've said, it's always beautiful and sweet to allow the Bible to speak for itself. Not to apply human theories, not to apply human sophistries above the word of God. May the Lord help.